he says this, Therefore God exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So let's stand and worship together as we sing Angels We Have Heard on High. Good evening, church. Let's all stand and worship together. grab a seat. Uh, as we move into our time of offering, I'm going to invite Bobby Pauly to come up. Bobby's going to share with us some updates about our new space. Um, and if you would like to give or give your offering, you know we have four different ways to give. The best thing to do if you don't know is just go to our website and all of those are displayed and you can figure out the one that's best for you. Um, so go ahead, Bobby. Thank you, Bill. Merry Christmas, Restoration Church, and thank God for the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. So I wanted to spend a little time and, and speak with you a little bit and update you on how we're progressing with the, the building. And so we've engaged a, a general contractor uh, a little over two weeks ago. His name is Scott Lessinger. And Scott is a member of uh, Grace uh, Community Church that meets at Chickahominy Middle School. So he very well knows what we are aspiring to in terms of new space. So. Uh, Scott is a blessing, and we're very thankful to have him as our general contractor. Uh, you may know, some of you may know his wife, Megan. She's heavily involved in mops, and at um, any rate, um, just a, a great example of a Christian couple. 
Finally, um, Scott is well underway. He has uh, got our building permits filed. He has started ordering materials, uh, engaging with his con subcontractors, and uh, so work is getting ready to progress. Second thing is, is that uh, Dick Class has been able to negotiate for us an early entry into the space. And so what that means is that Scott actually gets to start to work early. Um, that has helped us in terms of the, the funding and how much money it's going to cost us because we've been able to elongate uh, the work time that he's been able to, uh, to have to do the, the remodeling. The, um, so the other thing is that just to, as a reminder, we were due to be in the space February 1st. That's when our lease begins. But thanks to Dick's efforts, we've been able to get in early and start to do some things. So the, the, um, the, the next subject is something that I really need everybody to pray over, and that's a conditional use permit. And it's something that we weren't aware that we really needed to be, um, to have, to be able to occupy this space. So. Hanover County, the planning department has been very, very good to work with. Uh, they are trying to help us get a four-month process down to a three-month process. And as I said, we're a little late in starting that. So prayer would be very much appreciated. And uh, we're looking to get that filed before January 4th. The other thing that, that we've been active in doing is uh, acquiring furniture for the new space. And we've been able to bid at an auction for some of the uh, things that we need that the library had. So they had an open auction, and we were able to acquire quite a bit of, of furniture, casual seating tables, a lot of just various things that we think that we're going to need. So we're thankful for that as well. Um, the tech team has been busy looking at the worship space, thinking about how this all needs to come together from a technical perspective. And so they've been looking into some ways of maybe finding churches that are downsizing or um, churches that maybe have extra equipment that we may be able to convert for our use. So there's work going on there, and hopefully we'll be able to pull all that together. Uh, we have been able, through another auction, of acquiring some projector screens, which we got next to, for next to nothing. And um, we're just really blessed to be able to find ways to try to be good stewards of, of how much this church has uh, blessed us with the funding. So with all that said, we are looking at hopefully opening up sometime mid-April. And in mid-April, what we're going to do is have what we call a soft opening. And basically, that's a way for us to test things out, make sure that the equipment works well, the layout, the flow of people, everything that goes into to having a church service to make sure that this all goes well. And then hopefully a couple, two, three weeks after that to be able to have a grand opening where we can invite the community in and, and really d demonstrate to the community how we're looking to reach out and share the gospel. So one thing that, that we've been promising for a while now is opportunities for you as a congregation to participate in the build out. And so we basically have three things that are upcoming. Uh, first being is that, as I mentioned, we're gonna get into the space early, and we have some work to do in there before Scott Lessinger starts the remodel. And uh, that's such things as taking down some uh, um, counters that we're gonna repurpose for the build out, removing some um, bookshelves and what have you, and getting those ready to be repurposed and reused other places in the space. So, you know, we've got a little bit of furniture that we need to get situated and put aside so that it doesn't interfere with Scott's work. Next thing is, is Dave Gorban has been willing to step up and lead the effort of painting the inside of this building. And Dick Klass and, and Dave have been working on what kind of paint and how much paint and how much stuff we need to be able to pull this off. And I, I will tell you, it's not a little bit of space that needs to be painted. So Dave is gonna be putting out an appeal for volunteers. And you know, if you have skills in that area, please step up, um, volunteer. What we're gonna to hope to do is as Scott finishes different spaces and opens them up, that we'll be able to paint as we go along. That's still to be seen, but that's, that's what we're hoping for, and Scott's very uh, open to us doing that. 
And then finally, we are going to build a stage. So uh, if you have skills in that way in terms of carpentry or, or you know, just had some exposure, this is essentially going to be a deck that we're going to build and make a stage out of within the, the worship space. So um, look for opportunities there. Uh, we're hoping to get that work underway sometime in March. So, you know, just a, a word about all of that um, in terms of putting it in perspective. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening, a lot of uh, work to be done over the next two or three months. But I want to encourage you to think about the work that starts after we get into space. So in April, when we get underway, you know, we're going to get an opportunity to put our best foot forward, and we're going to get an opportunity to show the, the, the community what Restoration Church is really about, and that's leading people to a saving uh, relationship with Jesus Christ. So, you know, we're thankful for what this congregation has done in terms of support. The vision campaign, I'll be honest with you, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed with how faithful and how dedicated this church body is to um, this ministry that we call Restoration Church. So I thank you for all that you've done, all that you will do, and all the, the, the funding that you've contributed uh, to make this uh, truly a reality. So, you know, as members, we've committed a lot, and we're going to ask a lot coming up in terms of skills and, and talents and time. So with that, um, let's, let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for all the, the things that you've put into place to make this space Come, become a reality. And Lord, we thank you for the dedication, the, the resources that this congregation has put forth in your name to make this all a reality, to make it a place where we can lead people to Christ in your name. For it's your son's name I pray. Amen.
Let's, let's pray. Uh, God, you are the King of Kings. Help us to see that. Help us to see you, to worship you, to hear from you tonight. We pray this in your name. Amen. Uh, if you've been with us the past few weeks, that you know that we've been doing a sermon series on Psalm 23 called The Good Shepherd. And we know that the Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We've seen how the Good Shepherd leads, rescues, provides, shepherds, and in the very true sense of the word, and how he always knows what to do for his sheep. We've seen that we are his sheep. And as we come to the end of this sermon series, that the psalm turns a little bit. It flips. And you may have noticed that if you've been reading, reading along, because verse 5, instead of going with the sheep analogy, where the shepherd always does exactly what a normal shepherd would do, we move to like a human analogy. And it's one that even is a bit strange. And just think about it with me, that um, he, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But what is about this table in the presence of the enemies? That you prepare a table before me? I mean, shouldn't you be getting rid of the enemies rather than working on making food? What is this about? And as we engage this table and this whole psalm today, I want us to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to ask you to use your imagination. I'm going to ask you to join me as I tell a different kind of story. We're going to look at four characters and them meeting a, another table, a table in the middle of the woods. And the whole point of all of this is the main point of Psalm 23, and it's this, is that God relentlessly desires relationship. God relentlessly desires relationship. And I hope you'll see that as we look at Psalm 23, but also in this story that I'm going to tell. So imagine that you're in a, de a dense forest. The sun's going down. The temperatures are starting to drop. The scurrying animals are hiding in their burrows while you hear wolves and owls in the distance. It's beginning to get a little bit dangerous. And all of a sudden, that this trail that's been weaving through the woods, all of a sudden comes to this clearing. And there's this meadow. And in the middle of the meadow is this table. And it's a table that isn't just a regular table. It's set for an elegant dinner party. China, silver, wine is in the glasses, bread is on the table. What do you do? Now, the first character in our story who meets this is a wiry trail runner. Now, he's, um, he's far ahead of everyone else because he's skirted that whole valley of shadow of death thing behind him. He just, he found a shortcut around it, and he's coming to this, this clearing, and boom, he sees the table. At first, he's perplexed. What is this table right here? But he quickly concludes, it's of no use, probably what this thing is. It's a distraction for the weak-minded. <laughs> People are like sheep, you know? They're always, always getting distracted by the things of the world. This is probably one of those. If not, it's probably a trick. <laughs> yeah, and even if it's not, yeah, sweet. Let's have dinner in the middle of a dark forest with wolves around us. Yeah, right, I'm leaving. Still, he grabs a knife just for protection and a loaf of bread just in case he gets hungry. I mean, you never know what might happen in the woods. But really, I mean, he doesn't really want the bread. The bread's probably gluten-free anyway. He's probably going to throw it out. And as he leaves the meadow, he laughs to himself about the naive folks who are coming behind him that probably will be seduced by the possibility that someone actually cares for them. People don't help unless they have an agenda. He's not going to get burned again. And he knows that if you want to make it through the woods alive, you have to be on your guard. You cannot let the emotions get the best of you. Weak people get eaten alive. Shortly after he passes, that a young woman scurries in, and she almost misses the table entirely because she's going so fast, but she catches it out of the corner of her eye. Now, this woman wouldn't win any awards for her fashion. She's dressed in a very simple way that allows her to be protected from the brambles and thorns of the forest, but also allows her to hide when she needs to. But she stops suddenly when she sees the table, and out of the corner of her eye, the china, the silver, the setting, it reminds her of Christmas parties and dinners of years past, of the music, the dancing, the laughter. 
and our heart begins to fill with hope of maybe doing those things again. But then there's a hoo, 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 and the owl's voice quickly becomes her own. Who, who are you? Who could this table be for? Certainly not for you. And she knows it. She says, that's right. I don't deserve this. No one would do anything for me if they really knew me. And so she quickly darts out of the meadow, trying to move as quickly as possible, just like she did with that dark valley that was passed, mostly with her eyes closed, hoping that no more bad things happen tonight. Even though she knows bad things are coming, hopefully she can just run faster. Guilt is her constant companion, always keeping pace with her. Now, about 30 minutes later, the sky has started to turn from a orange to purple to almost, almost nighttime. And in walks this guy, struts this guy, who looks like he's straight from an REI catalog. In fact, it looks like he's bought every single thing in the catalog. Now, he's just, he's loaded down. It's, all this stuff is useful. All this stuff is good. And he knows that he looks a little bit silly. But hey, he's going to be prepared. No matter what happens, he is going to find a way out. And honestly, He's all about helping. And so if there's an emergency, people are going to come come to him for the satellite phone or the flare or whatever else they need. He's there to help. But he sees this, and he comes into the meadow and says, oh, this must be the place to set up camp. Then he checks his guidebook and says, nope, the guidebook says I need to go farther before I set up camp. But still, he, he looks at everything on the table, and he's interested, but then gets increasingly just frustrated he says, I can't believe this waste. Who would put this in the middle of the woods? It's probably going to get broken. And look, the spoons aren't even in the right place. There's a knife missing right here. What good is this? Oh, this is another problem that I need to fix. Just like I fixed that dammed up water in the stream, and just like I fixed that rickety bridge in that weird valley that I went through, and just like I fixed all of the bad signage in the woods, that I need to fix this also when he straightens up the spoons to get them in the right place. And is about to leave, but then says, no, I have an idea. I am, I am about helping people. And so he grabs two place settings, finds a way to stuff them in his bag, and says, maybe, you know, there's two people in front of me. I bet they could use something. I bet I can help them. My motto is, people have problems, I have solutions. So let me get this stuff, and I will fix it for them. They've got needs. I've got plans. Perfect combination. So off he struts, has everything he needs for a night in the woods. He's a realist. He knows the problems are ahead. Now then, when it's basically pitch black, someone else stumbles into the woods. A woman, she's a bit older and out of breath, but she has a bewildered smile on her face. However, if you would have seen her a couple miles back, you would have seen a very, very different woman. She had just made it through the dark, dark valley in some kind of circuitous route that was somehow always firm, even though she went in circles. And when she had come up, up to the top of the valley, that she had said, all right, I hope I have enough light to get through the forest ahead. But she got to the top, pitch black. She sat down to cry, thinking, oh, I thought that what was happening there was an experience that was a promise for future hope, but maybe, maybe it was just confusing. Maybe it was just deception. I don't know. And immediately she hears a wolf crying. Oh, and off she runs, sprinting in the opposite direction. But she looks up and notices three things all at the same time. Not only is it dusk dark, it is dark, dark now. But also that she looks around and there are fireflies in all of the grasses on the side of the path. And also that right between the trees, there's a full moon that's risen. And somehow that it is a li- it's lighting the path right in front of her. And that because other people had walked it before, that it's reflecting. And so she's able to just walk this path and she starts to jog and then skip and is just laughing at herself at the utter ridiculousness of all of this. Because it seems like no matter what happens, there's always just enough for one more awkward step in front. So when she, gets to the, when she gets to the meadow and sees the table in front of her, I mean, she is out of breath, bends over, and almost just starts laughing and says, yeah, so this is for me too? <laughs> yes, says a voice. Come and enjoy your master's feast. And she did. Course after course, simple things bursting with flavor, and a cup 
that was never empty. But even all of those things, all of the foods couldn't hold a candle to the master of the feast. He was at some level the most attentive and humble servant, but also the Lord of the banquet presiding over everything. That she saw two or maybe three times that he went out to defend her from wolves or from would-be thieves. But what stood out most in a way that she couldn't describe it was the sense of holy joy that he had. She woke up the next morning at first light, not knowing when exactly she went to sleep, only that her neck was a little bit sore from falling asleep on the table, much like some people feel after sleeping in bunks at watermarks. And the only thing she saw was a bowl of fruit and a glass of milk. She started off surprised how light she felt. The food certainly gave her strength, but it seemed like more than anything, it was renewed confidence that lifted her spirit. Her journey had been hard, actually harder than the other three people before her. But it was good. And at every turn, there was a surprising gift that met her. She, was, she became convinced that no matter how the path led, something or maybe someone good, faithful, kind was right at her heels, helping her along the way, chasing her even. And more than anything else, she knew where she was headed. Home. I'm curious as you hear these stories, where do you see yourself in them? Maybe parts of different ones. Do you see yourself as the cynic who, through everything, is unwilling to give yourself to anything greater? Or maybe you see yourself as the sad proud individual who is unable to receive help. The un- unable to believe that there actually might be someone who would love. Or do you see yourself as the know-it-all who can fix anything except your lack of joy and wonder at life? Or do you see yourself as the humble follower, not knowing what is ahead, but convinced that the goodness and mercy of God are pursuing you every step of the way? I wonder also, what would your motto be? Would your motto in life be, surely goodness and mercy will follow me? Or is it, things are probably going to get worse, don't get your hopes up. Or, I'm not good enough. I never will be. Or, if I don't fix it, no one else will. What is your motto in life? Where do you see yourself in this story? What would you do coming to such a table? Now, in Psalm 23, that the picture of this table that's laid before as a feast with head anointed with oil, cup overflows, speaks of welcome and invitation and kindness. It's if you wanted to show somebody that you valued them and cared for them, that's the thing you would do. It's the same as what you see in the, in the parable of the prodigal son, how that there's a ring on his finger, a robe on his back, a fattened calf slaughtered, that there's everything pulled out, the, the stops are pulled out so that he can know that he's loved. And it's the same thing in Psalm 23, that this feast, this table showing invitation and welcome. But at the same time, it's odd. It's in the presence of enemies, That God's grace comes to us, but it comes to us where we have to accept it on his terms, not on our own. And so that's the question when we read Psalm 23. Do we trust the good shepherd who gives us grace in surprising ways? What would you do? Would you have sat at the table? Would you have thought it was a waste of time? Would you fix clearly the bad manners of which it had been set up? What, What would you do? Now, in an alternative version of the story that the master of the feast meets each of the three people as they leave. And for the first, for the cynic that he look, or for the, sorry, for the first, he sees Mr. Fixit's attempts to control everything and laughs (laughs) and says, don't you see? Even the son of God has a belly button. That even the one who is in control of all things and who can do things exactly the way he wants chose the risk of sending his son as a baby. (laughs) Surely there must be something greater in this world. And then the, the master of the feast meets the woman and shows her his hands and says, the price has been paid. Come home. 
And then at last that he also meets the cynic and looks at him with a dead seriousness and says, look around. Then look at the empty tomb. Nothing blossoms until it dies. Will you lay your life down? Whoever wants to gain their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. As the worship team comes back up, I want you to take some time to consider where do you see yourself in this story? What stands out to you? And this song that we're going to be singing next speaks to those things. It speaks to who we are, even on our worst days, and who we're called to be. So pray with me. God, thank you that you desire relationship and that you do so relentlessly. Pray that we would know that you are pursuing us and that you are a good shepherd who we can follow today and every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing this next song, it's called O Come All Ye Unfaithful, which is a little different from the traditional Christmas song that we're all used to. But basically, the message of this song is really...
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know what my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God gives us this table as an invitation to come to him. This table isn't the table of Restoration Church. This isn't table of any affiliation. This is a table for those who have said, Jesus is the good shepherd who has laid down his life for me. And I'm turning from my sins, from my old way, and I am trusting him. I've been baptized into his church to be a community of his sheep. That's who this table is for. It's not a table for those who have it all figured out or have it all together, but who know they need Jesus. So as we come, let's confess our faith together. And we'll confess our faith by reading Psalm 23. So I think it should be up on the screen. And if not, then you will have wished you would have memorized it. (laughs) Let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when giving thanks, he broke it. So this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread or drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. So we'll all take communion together if you're receiving it. Um, So if you could go ahead and grab your hermetically sealed portable communion. Um, If you're not celebrating communion either here or online, that uses as a time of reflection, saying that God's table is open. Will you come? If this is your first time using these, you'll notice that there is a little flap at the top where the wafer comes in or where the wafer is and then below that there's another flap where the juice is Um, so these are the gifts of god for the people of god receive them with joy and thanks god we set aside these normal things for an extraordinary purpose and god pray that you would set us aside as normal people for extraordinary purposes as you lead and direct us all the days of our life. Would you nourish us by these things and by your word and pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Please stand with us for one last proclamation of our faith.
You can grab a seat. Uh, so as we conclude our service, I want to bring us back to a place that we started, where 1 John tells us about love. This is one of the things that he tells us. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words but with actions and in truth. There are probably a lot of ways that we're thinking about that this season, as it is very clear to anyone who looks around that there are significant needs everywhere. And so as we go, that we want to be people who not just know that God loves us because we see the truth proclaimed in history and in the scriptures and in our hearts, but people who experience that love by giving it. So one of the, some of the things that here are just a couple things that are happening. If you're looking for something, just these are some ways that we're trying to give back as a church. Uh, so Monday and Tuesday, so to, um, the, we're going to be having our final reverse fundraiser of the calendar year. And so if you are just kind of joining us, our reverse fundraisers is where we found a local restaurant and said, hey, we want to support you. So we're going to choose some days where we're going to encourage the people from our church to go there. And it's reverse because we are going to donate back to you a portion of the profits. And so that, that's what we're going to do Monday and Tuesday at Marty's Grill um, next to Kroger. If you go there, just tell them the restoration sent you, and then they'll put your name down, and um, then we'll get to give back a portion of whatever we spend. The other thing that we're doing is that um, the missions team has organized, has seen that the, uh, a lot of the workers at um, Memorial Regional, specifically those who are in the intensive care unit, could use some encouragement. And so we're going to be collecting cards for them over the next couple weeks. And so there's a bag at the back of the door. You probably didn't bring, if you're here with us, you probably didn't bring your card supplies. Um, anyway, but you can, if you're, or if you need to find a way to get a card to somebody, you can look at details. They'll be in restoration for the week, but we want to bless them to say, Thank you for what you're doing. Um, also, just notes about Christmas is that Christmas Eve, we will be here at MCC, 8 o'clock. Christmas Eve is still December 24th. That hasn't changed in this year, although many other things have changed. We'll be here at 8 o'clock for a Christmas Eve service or online. Um, also, that on uh, the, the next Sunday, the next Saturday, Sunday, that we'll, we're going to be having an online-only service. So the 26th and 27th will be online only. So you can either tune in to YouTube or Facebook Live to be able to, to access that service. But then we'll be back at MCC on Saturday night, January 2nd, 2021, um, for, for worshiping together as well as online. So with all of that, hear, the, hear this benediction as you go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and all of our days. Amen.